Welcome to Grappling with the Gray, a forum for promoting an ethical mindset and ethical decision-making to help us more clearly see both sides of complex issues and better navigate the moral challenges of everyday life. I'm Rabbi Yonison Goldson, and I'd like to welcome my transatlantic guests today. With me is Pascal Durian, who is CEO of Migraine Israel, not Migraine Israel, <laughs> Migraine Ireland, a registered charity dedicated to empowering migraineurs by providing innovative services through education, information, and outreach programs. Carolyn Lebanowski was a strategic leadership partner with the Institute for Leadership and Lifelong Learning International, as well as a columnist at Biz Catalyst 360. And Tony McClelland is founder and director of First Life Group. She is a critical friend and business mentor in social justice, mobility, and impact leading sustainable change through DEIB and compassion. Thank you all for traveling all the way from across the pond to be with me today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Here is our topic for today. On recent panels, we've discussed objective reporting versus editorial activism in the newsroom and freedom of speech versus irresponsible rhetoric on college campuses. There's a similar tension facing companies when they wade into the social and political arena. A variety of companies have recently come under fire for their, cho their choice of spokespeople, their support of public or international policy, and their partnership with celebrities who may hold controversial or polarizing views. Without getting into the weeds about specific controversies, what is there to say about businesses taking positions on hot button issues? On the one hand, don't those with power and influence have a responsibility to advocate for equality and justice? On the other hand, since so many issues are complex, nuanced, and highly emotional, should businesses just mind their own business and leave social change to others? As a consumer, is it practical, realistic, or even proper to expect businesses to remain neutral on social issues? Since we can't agree on everything, at what point should I seriously consider boycotting businesses because of their political or social stance, even when I'm inconveniencing myself by doing so? The floor is open. Mm -hmm. hey, what springs to mind, and I, I should be a gentleman and let the ladies talk, but uh, before I forget, because I'm getting old, so I tend to forget, but as opposed to boycott, what I was thinking, the opposite, to embrace. Uh, the reason I'm talking about that is social enterprising, B Corp, you know, all those type of organizations are trying to fix issues and they have a political stand, uh, whatever they are, you know, it could be integration of prisoners as drug users, it could be fixing an issue, it could be sustainability, it could be anything. So they tend to be smaller. Uh, having said that, you have some B Corp who are pretty big and I think they, they have a, a political stand. Now, I suppose the question is, what is acceptable for an enterprise to, to have a political stand? And obviously you were mentioning polarizing issues. Uh, I suppose uh, companies who tend to be in trouble, are probably companies who have been in neutral uh, throughout the history and they cross the line at some point, whatever there is, maybe it's on the left, on the right, or sometimes it's not acceptable. Uh, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, the Me Too movement and all this type of things. So some people put their feet into it. However, I think you cannot be neutral uh, in the world. Uh, now you may communicate in a different way. Uh, and I think the bigger the company is, the probably the bigger the issues might be because it's going to be amplified and magnified. But to go back to my initial point, you know, our social enterprise, and I'm big in, obviously I'm very involved in this, or activism via charities, which are enterprises to a certain degree as well, or non-for-profit organizations, I think you have to take a stand. Uh, neutrality, mm, yeah, yes and no. Uh, even Switzerland is not neutral. Yeah. Um, I think that you bring up a really great point and I you know Jonathan I think you said somewhere in there where we stay in our own lane 
or stay on your own aisle. Um, I think in a world that we live in today, I'm not sure that that's the safe place to be. If we have any type of moral compass or moral values or moral clarity, I think we need to speak something. But Pascal, what I think you're saying is to what degree and to what point, and are we hurting other people by having or using our voice? And I think companies do need to take a stand but I think when they do, I think they need to understand what are their risks, what are their benefits, and was it worth it? And I think those are the bigger questions. When you say, was it worth it, Carolyn, do you mean, was it worth it financially or was it worth it in terms of having an impact? Impact. Impact to their own customer base or their own internal moral compass. Was it worth it? What are your thoughts? I'm sitting here in myself at the moment because I'm really just listening to Carolyn and Pascal's thoughts and and I, I can pick up a couple of points from, from either. And I think that um, where I am with all of this is that if your organisation is a B Corp or, you know, really embedded within social impact, justice, mobility, those types of issues, you know, you really are making a stand socially um, with a message, then I think that you have no choice but to take that step forward and lead from the front with whatever piece it is that you are championing. If you are an organisation that is not necessarily, necessarily, you know, socially, you know, leading at the front, however, you still got that responsibility uh, um, internally, then I think it's about being more tactful about your message because you really do need to remember that the people in your organization um that's who you're speaking for you know you're not speaking for yourself and so your own personal values or your own personal beliefs shouldn't really come into it because it's about what is the organization mission vision values are they embedded within there and you must really think about speaking for the organization and um, not being divisive because um, that is that is really what it's about. It's about tact and it's about balance and it's about knowing when to speak out and knowing when not to speak out. And if you do, you know, being really, really thoughtful about how you communicate it responsibly. I think that's a really wonderful way of framing it, Tony. Um, you know, oh, I'm so the corporation. <laughs> What's that? Wonderful way of saying sitting on the fence. <laughs> well, it's no, it's 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 not because you know, and I agree with with you, Pascal, that neutrality is 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 an easy but often irresponsible position. But at the same time, if I'm making decisions or a board is making decisions about company policy and we're going to support this position or that position, well, we have all our employees who may have very different views. You know, if it's something we can all get behind, like torturing puppies, um, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of controversy on a subject like that. But but you you see what's happening with with companies taking a stand, or sometimes it's the employees taking a stand against the company. Uh, we sort of have to agree that we have a a business mission, and that may be incompatible with social issues that we're not all on board with at the same time. I absolutely I, agree. I, absolutely agree. And I, I think you know there's as we were saying this, you know, big up social enterprise, you know either way. I think more commercially driven, probably more agnostically driven type of companies where show example tech, you know, you it's products. It's product driven. Now they do a bit of CSR and all these type of things, and you can argue what is the agenda. But uh, in Europe, uh, recently, and actually in Portugal, and it was an Irish businessman who had actually set his foot into it, which was the CEO of the Web Summit, which is a very large uh, tech conference. And he took position uh, on the current conflict in Israel. Uh, and um, rightly or wrongly, uh, it did backfire on him uh, to a point that he had to step down because it's starting to hurt. 
actually uh, is companies are uh, clients starting to flee en masse and are yet to be replaced very, very quickly by another more neutral CEO. And now they're doing a lot of backpedaling and reverse engineering in order to reacquire uh, some customers. And, I, and because the reason why it, because it's been very neutral and agnostic for years and they were doing what they had to do, tech to tech, B to B. And suddenly the last few years, this individual has come up with her, his own personal agenda and starting to talk, but more as a CEO of that company, as opposed to Paddy Gosgrave, for better word, that's his name, uh, and it's in the public domain. Uh, and then it's starting to completely backfire at him because there was not a huge differentiation there in people's mind between the company and what they were standing for, and they were doing something completely different to his views, and it's starting to damage his company. I think when it is uncontrolled, uh, when it's not aligned, and that's the word we're trying to find, when it's not aligned, I think it becomes irresponsible. Uh, you know, Sony, which is a big company, so I'm not having any vested interest, they are known for what they're doing, Sony Music, computers, all these type of things. They already take a stance, politically speaking, because that's not what they're all about. However, Innocent uh, or whatever the big corp, they do because that's what they do. Sustainability, fashion, you know, in fashion as well, you know, all these type of things you have to because it's more that's the moral compass needs to come into play. Not all companies do it, you know, in retail. Uh, you're you're right. Uh, company here. Yeah, in, in, uh, uh, however, uh, I think it's the world has become so ambiguous and the retaliation being so immediate as well when you actually cross the line that it does also bring me to a point where you know, some point, some viewpoints are probably not acceptable, at least from where I'm standing with my uh, value system. However, we're reaching a point where now people are almost uh, afraid and emotions are almost suppressed because of cancel culture and all these type of things, not only in entertainment, but also in business, when reputations can be disintegrated within five minutes uh, and you can make mistakes. You know, not, the world is not perfect. People do what they can, not always what they want. And sometimes, but what I actually think as well, I'm a charity leader. I have to be very wary of what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. I know I don't cross the line. I'm very neutral. I have my, I'm known in social enterprise. I'm a lefty. I'm an activist. I'm no, everybody knows that. It's in the public domain. It's always been like that. However, you know, I tend to provide a viewpoint on things I master. Well, that I would like to say I master. Where actually, where I can provide, uh, I suppose, uh, additional. Uh, pointers or maybe wisdom sometimes. What, when it becomes dangerous, it's when people are starting to vehicle opinions that are not fact-checked, uh, it's hearsay, it's jumping on the bandwagon, borderline, you know, herd mm -hmm. mentality. I think that's when it becomes very, very problematic. Uh, uh, it, it's not binary, here, you know, yeah. you, it's not safe. It's not binary. You cannot really be perfect. Uh, we're all probably going to put our feet into it. I think the differentiation is if you do that in a closed environment, the damage is minimal. If you do it either on social media, on the radio, or on TV, you're doomed. You're finished. Can I contribute something? Um, just really listening to what Pascal's saying and I'm just going to kind of come in from a slightly different approach and just kind of coming back to Jonas and your original question which was around the separation almost of business and this social agenda and I kind of feel that you know organizations can't separate them too much because we've got to really be very embedded almost within corporate social responsibility, which Pascal mentioned. We've got sustainable development, which everybody needs to be behind. And so these, you know, whether it's a diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and environmental, social, and governance agendas, they're all 
about the sustainability of business and are very much driving the business agenda moving forward. So whether you want to or not, if you want to survive as a business, you really need to get behind some of these agendas and see which ones, you know, are the ones that you're going to be championing or which ones work for you within your values and missions within your organization. So the two become entwined. And I don't see that you can be successful as a business moving forwards unless there is some kind of social, the, the big agendas, ESG, SDP, they're all social people. So that's that's my take on um, you can't avoid but, it. Yeah, so Tony, I would like to ask you a question and I, I totally agree with you and I love what you said earlier about um, when you are in a, in a place of messaging, you know, to be tactful and that the way that you say it, not what you say, but how you say it, and that you're also we're catering not only to our own organization, but catering to our client base or customer base as well. But if we are going to stand for a hot topic, if it's social justice or whatever, can we really do that with everybody being on the same team? Won't there be some dividedness somewhere in that topic? And then how is that best managed? Well, you see, the, th the way that I see it is that if somebody is coming out um, and making a public statement, they are speaking on behalf of that organization is my own personal view. We as an organization, you should really be discussing whether it be in your board meetings or in your contingency plans about how these communications are going out. Should something have to be said? You know, because it's a, a collective, it's a collective we, this is what we stand for, this is how we are going to approach it. There shouldn't be any individual um, voice in in my own opinion, you know, leading that, mm -hmm. leading that, that um, because it's, a, it's about the people, you're leading the people, you have the vision, you have the mission, and then you bring the people on board. And so it's a collective we. That's just my I, thought. And Right or wrong? I, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I agree with you. And I think where I'm coming from, and I think this is a really slippery slope, and it depends on the company itself, the size of the company, the impact it has in the community. I think all of those are part of it. And I know it has in the community as well. That's a big one. It's true. But what I was going to say was when what came to my mind was Macy's department stores and the whole open gun laws that were, that's a huge organization. And when Macy's was, you know, thinking about approving having open guns in the stores, not everybody is going to agree with that. And yes, there were lots of meetings that were happening beforehand. What was that messaging? How were we going to tell the employees? How were we going to let our customers base know that we're keeping you safe? And so, yeah, there's a lot of meetings behind that. But in the bottom line, not everybody's going to agree with that. And some people are going to quit. And some customers may not shop there anymore. So I know we're not here to talk about particular issues, but that was the one that kind of came to mind on thoughtful, you know, intervention and how how was our mes messaging going to come across? And I think you can uh, refer to specific issues to to draw out the the general from the specific. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we have we have a a store here in a uh, business here in, in in the states called Chick Fil A. Um, they um, they're a producer of you know chicken. Um, fast food place and they are based very firmly in christian values and that has led them to have a very public stance on social issues that they feel are consistent with um their christian values now that's a turnoff to people um because a lot of the popular social issues are um a lot of people on the other side um that's their brand and that's who they're serving and in fact they recently appointed a head of DEI and their own base turned on them, <laughs> which I think, you know, maybe with some uh, you know, little PR ahead of time, they might have been able to avert that because I don't think there's really any intrinsic difference between uh, being a good Christian and, and being sensitive to DEI. But I think that DEI is something that people are now just sort of thinking of as a political position as opposed to a social philosophy um but if i'm you know you mentioned sony pascal if i'm if i'm working if i go to work for sony i don't necessarily want them advocating social positions that are contrary to my own that's that's not why i went to work there uh, and i don't want to be associated with that is it is it right for me is it right for them 
to put me in a situation where now I'm part of a an organization promoting values that are contrary to my own. Yeah, well, that's... absolutely. Yeah, that's just where you. There's a couple of things that are from an observation perspective. So, at least in Europe, uh, organization as a whole, what I've seen is senior individuals going rogue uh, from a messaging perspective. So that's one thing. Also, uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, the Internet of Things appeared, uh, whereby the boundary became blurry, always switch on, all these type of things. It became a big narrative in the tech industry. You know, you can always do things and you're, you know, the, the, person, the, the personal boundaries, e.g. political boundaries as well, uh, and, and business boundaries became a bit more blurry and it didn't come in with any policies internally and so on. But fast track, fast forward 15 years, where we're in a very polarized environment. So people don't necessarily have terms of reference as well and sometimes got lost. I'm old enough that I started to work a while back, whereby business was business. You were going to work. And rightly or wrongly, actually, there was no social enterprise either in those days, or were they not even called like that? The concept didn't exist. Uh, and I think they were compartmented. I, I, I think politics were in a political arena, business was doing business by and large, and so on and so on. Uh, you know, I'm oversimplifying, but you know, for Joe Blogs, that's how it was mainly. With the launch of technology and always switch on and 24 seven, the, the boundaries are blurred. and even some CSR agendas are else. Oh, I know a lot of corporations that sell hugs and kisses, but really, it's just a tick the box exercise. You know, that's what it is. And I've been working in quite a few of them. Uh, so I know it from the inside. Uh, but, uh, oh, they're going to make big statements that they want to change the world via technology, blah, blah, blah. No, it's about share price. That's all it's all about. The rest is actually not really happening. But sometimes you have individuals who take that message further and they become rogue. So the, the example I took, uh, I've never heard any of probably the 2000 employees of the web summit making any comment. It was always the CEO crossing the line. I think he became rogue. He was not in line with his board and so on, as Tony was actually indicating. Uh, we don't necessarily have in Europe, and correct me, because you're also based in Europe, you're talking about this company about chickens. In Europe, we probably, I don't know any companies who would have this type of stance, so it's probably very American uh, to a certain degree. Uh, but uh, why not to a certain degree? You know, uh, if I can do social enterprise, I need to be prepared that any other company in the spirit of, you know, freedom and democracy and all these type of things and different type of value system, maybe to able to uh, advocate their own values. Now, for me, it would be a turn off. Okay, no more chickens, uh, but that's just me. Uh, but at least they know what they stand for. They don't pretend to be something they're not either. So, which, so you know, in a way, it's interesting. So that's really interesting, Pascal, because... Um... Because you, you, you mentioned about uh, individuals going rogue. And what it made me start thinking about was, are they going rogue against the company or are they going rogue against their own, you know, their own personal thoughts and beliefs? Because, and what it made me start thinking about was um, there was a time where a news presenter, you know, was, uh, you know, decided that they didn't want to wear a poppy you know, and everybody else in the organization, even guests that were coming on were wearing this poppy and this presenter said, no, I don't want to, you know, I don't believe in it, etc. So, you know, was that person being rogue? We, we've just had an MP that's been sacked because of their their rogue, you know, their, their comments. And um, this is the thing, and it's about, you know, 
we know what it's like with political parties. They've got to be voted in. It's all about the people, isn't it? The people that you're representing, the people that you're serving. And once you're in those positions, you've got to remember that it's, you know, it's about them. You're representing them, aren't you? I'm always going to come back to that because that's what it, that's what it is. And I've seen people that have left organisations because actually their, their values are not, no longer aligned and I've seen people join organizations and taken a pay dip because they align with what their their thoughts and beliefs are so I think it's really really important that if you're with an organization you have to really be embedded within their beliefs otherwise it's just not going to work I totally agree with that and I'm going to go back to Chick-fil-a just for a second because I think Chick-fil-a does stand for those highly Christian values hmm. um, and when they hire that's what they're looking for. And you know what you're getting into. You know who you're working for. Mm -hmm. And full transparency, when the CEO of Chick-fil-A came out and said that the company stood against same-sex marriages, and then this whole boycott thing happened around chicken sandwiches, I was right there. I boycotted Chick-fil-A because if you're going to take that kind of stance, it's just not a company I want to support. And then one day I was driving by Chick-fil-A and I was really hungry. <laughs> I was really hungry and it's easy to drive through. It's a great chicken sandwich. And I thought I did. I went and I got a chicken sandwich and I, and I just thought to myself, like, what is my one sandwich? Like, is that really going to make, you know, the business make or break Chick-fil-A? I don't think so. W would I not support them on any other side of social events or, you know, buy big products? No. But I thought that was an interesting thing for me when I started thinking about these topics and Chick-fil-A in general. Yeah, but at least they're brave enough to to stand by what they believe. Yeah. yeah, and just by the way, I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> now I'm craving a sandwich. <laughs> well, 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 we won't go too much longer. Uh, let you get a snack. But, you know, the, the same idea, and, and I've looked at that in the introductory question, is that, you know, to what degree is it really practical to vet every company of which I'm going to be a consumer. Um, you know, Ben and Jerry's, the ice cream producers, um, you know, we have felt that they have consistently taken anti-Israel stances. And, and every time my wife comes home with <laughs> Ben and Jerry's, um, I say, you really have to get this? So well, it's on sale. <laughs> and they, you know, there's Haagen-Dazs, there's Edie's, we got plenty of choices of ice cream. Um, I might still eat it, uh, but it's... Might not taste so good. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, it's good ice cream. There's no denying it. But you know, it really is is difficult to evaluate. You know, I, I don't think any of us can ever be 100% in alignment with our own values. It's just the world's too complicated for that. So what's the percentage line that I draw? You know, is it the famous 80-20 or is that too much compromise? I think we we just have to be sincere in trying to find reasonable boundaries, reasonable demarcation points. And, you know, and I, Tony, that I, people will leave companies because they're not in alignment. I mean, that takes tremendous integrity yeah. um, to give up a job. This particular conversation I got really interested in and I did go down this small rabbit hole around Bud Light. Um, and the more I read on this chaos and controversy um, with Dylan Mulvaney, I, I I started to question, am I reading all the right materials? I got to read my sources. You know, who's, who, whose point of view am I actually reading and representing right now? Um, but that chaos and blow up that happened with Bud Light, it seriously made me consider as an organization and Bud Light is just a beer. It's just a beer and everybody likes a beer. But after everything I read and what happened to Dylan Mulvaney as a tra transgender who was hired by Bud Light and the death threats and the bullying and everything that her, her life was on the line just for this beer commercial that was not even a commercial, it was just on social media. And then what did Bud Light do about it? It was just like, hmm, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't boycott everybody. <laughs> but you do have to wonder 
what, you know, as Pascal, you were saying, what's happening in the boardroom? What, who's going rogue here and what conversations are being had? There's also the, you know, choosing someone like Dylan Mulvaney um, was presumably a conscious choice that was intended, I suppose, to attract customers beyond their current base. Mm -hmm. And was this a conversation they had up front? You know, what's the possible fallout? What could the consequences be? As we used in the beginning, Carolyn, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Or are we just going and to cause so much mayhem right. that it's better to not pick this particular course of action? Mm -hmm. And then you can be your own devil's advocate, what is called inclusive marketing. It's very trendy the last four or five years. It's 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 scripted, there's an intent, you have to be there, but it's a tick the box exercise. Now, sometimes the customer base or the, the workforce is not ready for it. So you have to be brave on both stuff when people actually do really that job when it comes to the NI. Um, but you can advocate uh, that maybe that should not be the case. You know, it really depends on your value system. Deep down, we're talking ecosystems and and systems and corporations, but it's down to individuals. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I've been, you know, I'm receptive to a lot of things and to some stuff. Just, yeah, well, I think it's a bit too much now. You know, can we tone things down a bit? Uh, it really depends on what it is. Uh, it depends on how you've been brought up and all this you know, value system, but it also depends about knowledge. Uh, you know, there's a, as you know, Israel, I'm bringing it up to Israel, but I have my own opinion, but I am actually, to your point, Caroline, I don't know if the foundations of my opinions are actually strong. I don't know, you know, is it emotionally driven? Wasn't than just being fact checked, and it like, actually are my facts actually the right facts? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, we don't know, so we we and I re, re, refer to my Internet of Things that came up. We, we're working on, on a spectrum and a 360 view of things daily. We are bombarded by tons of information that most of them actually we have a nanoseconds to make an opinion about. We can't, so we end up in those situations where people are crossing the line. Uh, and I think it's more people than organizations. I generally think it's more people, well, based on what I've mm -hmm. seen at least. Uh, I don't think uh, when you start to bring the collective into it, then you're starting to get different viewpoints and more consensus. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, normally, uh, unless you move into really extremist organizations and so on, which completely different ball game, but we're talking about business. Uh, I think the world of business is evolving faster than we were expecting. So even though I hate the terms, what we're talking about is kind of a collateral because it happens ahead of what the policies have been put in place mm -hmm. at board level and so on. So I think whether it's HR leaders or whatever, we are still in the catch up mode when it comes to those things. Funnily enough, I think smaller organizations such as charities, non for profit, we're probably more ahead because we are far more self aware of what's going on there. Uh, but those guys operate on such a scale that it's very hard to control the narrative uh, and ring fence it to a point when you have zero risk. Yeah, you know, they say it takes a long time to turn an aircraft carrier when you have these huge companies. Um, the culture has an inertia. Yeah. That's that's very hard to change. Ladies, any final thoughts? Well, I just think I think just based on what Pascal was saying, that um I think there's greater difficulty when you're just as an organization, you're not clear on what it is that you stand for and what your mission is. You know, I think that once you're really clear, then it becomes clearer what your line of activity should and shouldn't be. You know, one thing that I'm very clear about is that there's a lot of respect for people. I mean, I've had to go out and and publicly say things, you know, just based on what's happening in an organization. 
because not because you want to, but because there is a real need for you to um, as a leader. And I think that that's really what it's about. It's about taking that accountability and responsibility very seriously, knowing that you're you're doing things that that don't only benefit you. You, you. It's not just you in this equation. It's all the stakeholders. And you've got to think about every decision. Is there an impact? What is the impact on everybody else? And sometimes it's not even what's best for you as an individual, but what's best for the organization. And that is really, really important. But you've got to have balance and you've got to be tactful. And the last thing I would say is it's not everything that you have to be jumping up and down about. Do you know what I mean? You know, some things you can just watch from the sidelines. And if there's a need, you jump in. But um, you don't have to champion on everything. And uh, yeah, so that's that's it. Tact is what's needed. Act and pick your battles. Yeah, yeah um, I love word. that. Yeah, no, I just love that. I love that, Tony. I love the um, the idea of organizations having some moral clarity. Uh, not only for their leadership teams, um, but for their inner teams and for their for their base, for their for their um, their consumers. That everyone is clear on what we stand for. Just like Chick Fil A, you don't have to agree with it, but this is where we stand. And I think that that is that or is that not staying in your own lane? Hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, as usual, we end up with lots more to think about. Um, not always a uh, clear course forward, but the value comes from the discussion, being more aware and um, more thoughtful in the way we make decisions. So thank you, Pascal Darian, Carolyn Lewinowski, Tony McClelland, a really, really engaging conversation. For those of you who are watching or listening, if you have a topic you'd like us to take up, please go to my website, ethicsninja.com, use the contact information, Submit your idea. If it's uh, compelling, we will use it for a future episode. And until then, uh, I encourage you, as always, to continue grappling with the gray. <laughs>